my name is Tina Knox. I am the coordinator of our academic advising program in molecular and cellular biology. And I'm very happy to have some uh, alums with us today who were all in your shoes at one time. Uh, some of them graduated in biology, some in microbiology, some in biochemistry. We've got a, a lot of different people here. And they're willing to share their time today and let you know how they have become successful physicians and what it took them to get there. They've all got a little bit of different things to share with you today. Um, but the person I wanted to start by introducing to you is Dr. Richard Berkowitz. I have known Rich for quite a while. I think we met back in 2009. And he is actually the man behind our mentorship program. So you probably got emails from me talking about uh, an essay that you could write to possibly be matched up with a physician. And Rich is the one who helped me start this program. And really, he has reached out to tons of alums across the United States, and it continues to grow. So we are very much indebted to him and very appreciate appreciative of the time that he has devoted to that. Rich is uh, the Director of Anesthesiology and Perioperative Medicine at Community Hospital in Indiana, and he's going to talk to you a little bit today and then introduce our other speakers. And you can wear this up like this, whichever you're more comfortable with, because that's how we do it. <laughs> All right, I, I'm only going to take... Uh, I'm only going to take a few minutes because we have uh, quite a collection of physicians today. And whether they know it or not, our, our paths sort of crossed in one way or another. So I, I found out that um, Betty got her biology degree, Dr. Anderson got her biology degree from down here. We actually were graduated in the same year. I found that's that. That's where I know you're from, right? Know. Okay. Um, uh, Dr. Wheatley, who went to, who is the associate director for uh, cardiothoracic and vascular surgery at the Carnell Foundation Hospital. He went to uh, Southern Illinois University School of Medicine, where I actually interviewed him. My car broke down on my way to the interview, so we have a little bit in common there. Dr. Rosencrantz and I, who she is the director of the Internal Medicine Residency Program here, uh, down here in Champaign for the University of Illinois at Chicago in Champaign, Urbana. And we are both from the North Shore. And then Dr. Helfer, who I have not had the pleasure of meeting yet, other than from email, she actually went to the Peoria campus for the University of Illinois, and that's where I was graduated from in medical school. So one way or another, we're all connected, okay? Um, so as Tina said, we started this um, program back in 2010. It's officially started in 2010 with our first seminar. I had just gotten back from Haiti from doing a relief effort right after the earthquake. Um, so everything was rushed, but we did meet in 2009 to sort of organize this, and we have found the program to be very successful over the past years. What I'm going to do is I just want to talk a little bit about me, what I've done with my career, just very briefly. Um, so I was a pediatric anesthesiologist. I was trained in pediatrics, and then I trained in anesthesia. I practiced pediatric critical care for about 12 years, and then went into private practice for anesthesiology. Um, and that's what I do now, but I also instruct at the Indiana University School of Medicine, don't tell anybody, please. Um, and that's in the Northwest Campus in Gary. I teach there, I used to teach just third years in the operating room, now I teach second years as well. So I'm in the classroom once a month or once every three weeks with those students as well. I also run the perioperative services program at my hospital where I oversee all of surgery, scheduling, things like that to make sure things run well. Sometimes I do a really good job, other times I don't do such a good job. Okay. Well, I want to tell you some funny stories about me here down in Champaign. When Dr. Anderson and I applied to school here, we used to get our schedules on an IBM printout. Remember those? Okay. So the reason that it's printed like that from Shem and X and back, will somebody please pinch me? Well, I didn't know that it was the Chemnatics because it was all together on my schedule. So I said, what building is Shem and X? So that was very embarrassing. So if that wasn't embarrassing enough, when it got printed out, Noise Lab, and here's Dr. Rosencrantz now, Noise Lab was separated, so I didn't know what No Yes Lab was. So that's how, that's the problem. Now you guys don't have to worry about it because you do all your scheduling on the computer. No, no, I'm good. Okay. So where did it all start and, or almost never begin? So I'm going to tell you some funny things that happened to me along the way in high school and then on the way here in Champaign. 
Okay, not with those grades you're not. So all I cared about in high school was playing baseball, as you saw from the previous picture. So I walked in my sophomore year to see my counselor. My counselor said, what do you want to do when you grow up? And I said, I want to go to med school. She goes, not with these grades. She goes, what about where do you want to go to college? And I said, the University of Illinois. And she said, not with these grades. So I had to turn my life around. So I started paying more attention to school and a little bit less attention to baseball. So what do you mean I didn't get in? When I applied to the University of Illinois, I did not get in because I applied under pre-med bio. Now when you tell everybody else, my parents were first generation Americans, so they didn't know the tricks of the trade. So when I applied pre-med, I didn't get in. So I called the school and I said, you know what, I really want to go to the University of Illinois. That was my dream. The person on the other end, and I don't think this would ever happen today, said, I want you to reapply, but I want you to reapply under LAS General. So I reapplied under LAS General, and within a week I was in the school. So lucky me. Otherwise, I would have been going to Washington University, which would have been so bad that I didn't want to go there. Okay, so when we used to line up for our schedules, again, we did everything manually. We used to line up in the, the end of August. It was 110 degrees in the armory, and that's where we used to get our schedules, right? Right. <laughs> so what happened was I walked to the line, and I don't know if anybody ever heard of the Son of Sam. It was that summer that I was actually registering and the person behind the desk said you're not related and i said i am so what about you? okay so everybody he was a serial killer in new york i don't know if anybody <laughs> knew about that so okay. i got a d can't be it's over it's over it's over my first exam in college was my calculus exam okay the first exam and so i had done so much work on preparing for the problems and the theories and all of that stuff the first exam okay they make us write down all of the theories verbatim. It had nothing to do with the application. It was the theories. Look, I was an applications guy. I wasn't a memorization guy. So got a D. I got a 65, which wasn't so bad. The highest score in the class was a 95. Of course, it was an engineering student. Okay. So, but it wasn't over because obviously I made it to medical school. Look at you morons laughing in the face of death. I think Tina and Dr. Anderson remember when we used to take the Bio 110, 111 exams in the auditorium down the way, down at the other end of the quad. We used to take them all together, all 600 or 700 of us. And I remember it was, the, it was the, the week of Thanksgiving or just before Thanksgiving. We were all excited to go home. We're taking this exam. And then all of a sudden, just as the tests are being handed out, everybody just sort of starts laughing. And then they stop, and then one guy yells out from the balcony and says, look at you morons laughing in the face of death. So I don't know what happened to his grade on that, on that test. 20% <laughs> yield, the sodium bicarb was defective. That was my organic chem 131 class, okay? It was the first one, caffeine extraction. Should have gone great, but it didn't. I only got a 20% yield. Again, I dropped the class, took it next semester. I had a 90% yield, I did great. FLB is locked, what do I do now? We used to study at night. And as long as we kept the maintenance guys full of pizza, they would let us study there all night if we wanted to. So that's what we used to get in there before they locked the doors, and that's how we studied. One night it was locked, we didn't know what we were gonna do. I would think about another career, Richard. When I went to see the, the Dean of Health Sciences, at that time I think it was Dean Frankenberg, I went to go see him, and we were sorta, you know, I wasn't, I was doing okay, but I walk into the office, he looks at my grades, he says, I think about another career. So he didn't know who he was dealing with. So that was the last time I saw Dean Frank. So now the reason I have several surgeons with me today that are speaking, so I did this for them, not so much for you. Because as like natural, um, natural antagonists like cats and dogs, right? Cats and mice, Democrats and Republicans, they're surgeons and anesthesiologists. We don't get along ever. We get blamed for everything. Am I right or am I wrong? So we get blamed for the delays in the morning, the cases don't start on time, it's our fault, right? We get blamed for everything, we get blamed for bleeding, we get blamed for global warming, blood pressure's too high, blood pressure's too low, but this is an ongoing battle that's been going on for as long as there have been surgeons and anesthesiologists. Okay, so you've made up your mind to go to medical school, what can you expect, okay? I sit on the admissions committee at Indiana University School of Medicine, so I get to interview you guys when you have decided that you want to apply to medical school. All right, what we'll do is we're going to stop here because I want the other speakers to be able to speak, and then we'll cover things in the question and answer period. The question and answer period is critical. It's usually anything goes, well, almost anything goes, 
but that's the only way that you're going to get insight if you ask the questions about what it's like to apply to medical school. What is it like in the daily life, which are, some of our people will, some of our surgeons and physicians will explain to you today. Okay, so I thank you for coming.